In 1841, as the first big surge of new immigrants from Europe began to arrive on America's East Coast, far away on the West Coast, the first group of American pioneers reached California by covered wagon. Back then, California, like Texas, was still part of Mexico. The Mexican government had started to break up the vast lands of the old Spanish missions and open them up for settlement. In many cases, the mission buildings were sold off and their churches were abandoned. At that time, California's Russian fur trading and farming colony of Fort Ross, founded back in 1812, had pretty much been abandoned. Much of what the departing Russian colonists didn't want to keep was sold to an enterprising Swiss immigrant named John Augustus Sutter a man who had just received a 50,000 acre land grant from the Mexican government. In the wide fertile valley to the east of Fort Ross, Sutter was constructing a collection of buildings behind a high wall of adobe brick. His new outpost, called Sutter's Fort, was mainly intended as a way to make money by serving the needs of the growing number of pioneers coming to California. For example, it had workshops, sleeping quarters, various storerooms, and even a distillery for making whiskey. In the 1840s, Sutter's Fort was the western terminal for the wagon trains arriving from the east. And it was because of this fort that the city of Sacramento, the present-day capital of California, came to be founded nearby. In 1843, the third year of John Tyler's presidency, the land directly north of Mexican California was called the Oregon Country. This was a vast, sparsely populated region that stretched from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Ocean and extended as far as the southern border of Russian Alaska. At that time, the Oregon Country was still under the joint control of Great Britain and the United States. Back then, Britain dominated the region and maintained a huge fur trading outpost there called Fort Vancouver on the banks of the Columbia River. Their outpost, which was regularly visited by trading ships, was operated by the powerful Hudson's Bay Company of London. But British dominance of the region was about to end. For just to the south of Fort Vancouver lay the fertile valley of the Willamette River where tiny groups of whites had started to settle and where many others would soon follow. 1843 was the year an American missionary led a great migration of a thousand pioneers in a wagon train west from Independence, Missouri to the Oregon country along what came to be called the Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail was a rough, rutted track, about 2,000 miles, or 3,200 kilometers long, the longest of the great overland routes used in the westward expansion of the United States. Crossing it required making a difficult journey of six months. Most pioneers traveled in covered wagons, but some walked or even pushed wheelbarrows full of their belongings. Back in the 1840s, the pioneers referred to most of the land they passed over on the Oregon Trail as the Great American Desert, because they did not think that such dry, barren land could ever be farmed. Over the years, the Oregon Trail came to be dotted with forts. The biggest one was Fort Laramie in today's state of Wyoming. Here the pioneers could rest up in safety and even obtain many needed supplies at the fort store before they continued on with their long journey west. Not far from Fort Laramie, it is still possible to see where the pioneers carved their names in the rocks as a lasting reminder that they had passed by. In the present-day state of Idaho, the Oregon Trail branched. The southern branch, called the California Trail, ended at Sutter's Fort in Sacramento. The northern branch continued on toward Fort Vancouver. When the pioneers on the Oregon Trail finally reached the deep rocky gorge of the Columbia River, 
they knew they were close to their goal. Here the wagons were often placed on rafts and floated down to Fort Vancouver. And from there, the rich land of the Willamette Valley was just a short distance away. The very first pioneers that crossed the Oregon Trail ended up settling on land that did not belong to the United States. In fact, when John Tyler's presidency came to a close in early 1845, the nation was quite a bit smaller than it is today. Up north, it ended at the Oregon country, and down south, along the border of the Republic of Texas. Americans wanted the vast land that lay to the west, and later that year, a writer coined the term Manifest Destiny to explain why. The concept of Manifest Destiny was based on three beliefs. First, that the nation needed more land for its rapidly growing population. Second, that Americans could bring economic growth and democracy to places where they had never existed before. And third, that American territorial expansion was blessed by God because it was morally right. Just before the term Manifest Destiny was first used, a new U.S. president, James K. Polk, was inaugurated. And amazingly, between that time in 1845 and when his term in office ended in 1849, the American nation had reached the shores of the Pacific Ocean.